I'm back with Daniel D'Souza Gill, uh, author of uh, The Choice, The Abortion Divide in America, host of the um, show Counterculture with Daniel D'Souza Gill. We're talking about the uh, royal family and Harry, Prince Harry and um, Meghan Markle. Um, it seems like the focus on these two characters has come mainly because of the Netflix special, which was a kind of revealing, uh, uh, although maybe not revealing in the way they intended, uh, interview, uh, series of interviews with uh, Harry and Meghan Markle, uh, and also Harry's new book, Spare. Uh, can you, ex first of all, Am I right in assuming that the title Spare is an implication that Harry is referring to the fact that sort of uh, his brother is the, the first in line, he's the real deal, he's the legitimate heir, and Harry is kind of the spare? I mean, Harry makes some pretty wild accusations in his book Spare, which is the only reason that it's apparently the number one selling book in the Guinness World Records beating Obama to sell the most number of copies in the first day it was released. And it's not because he decided to share some childhood memories of you know, playing in some kind of field in England. It's because he wanted to really spill a lot of tea on the British family. So some of the main accusations he made were William and him got into a physical fight. William, you know, threw him, like grabbed him by the collar, threw him on the ground and he like cut his back on a dog bowl. Um, he claims that, you know, um, just uh, Charles, like when he was young said, oh, Diana, like, thanks for giving me a spare. Harry's my spare. Um, he makes claims about Camilla, you know, kind of being evil stepmother. He makes claims about Kate Middleton, uh, mostly regarding her fights with Megan, basically how Megan was the good one and, and Kate was kind of, you know, the the dumb one or something. And so he's very into kind of doing these personal jabs at each person, which is why so many people have been intrigued by the book. I've been buying the book because they want to see what's in it. Um, so he, well, him and I guess his ghostwriter, who also wrote Andre Agassi's book as, as a ghostwriter, knows like what sells. And so that's why he has all of these like, references to his todger his down there area he mentions it i think at least 15 times um he even talks about it you know being frozen like all these things so i think the, the author knew like what is going to sell in a book and that's kind of making things very explosive so spare is mostly kind of that and i would say the netflix documentary is a little bit more of harry and megan doing damage control because they're so hated so even in America, like Meghan Markle has a lower approval rating than Kate Middleton, even though most people in America know nothing about Kate Middleton. It just comes across like Meghan is always playing the victim card. And so basically, Harry and Meghan released um, that Netflix documentary, in my opinion, to kind of say, oh, no, we're just like two lovebirds and we are just against the world and all these things. And so that was kind of more of a it doesn't really get to some of those things with the fighting until the end because they wanted to say like here's my backstory here's my backstory um all of that so i think the netflix documentary is very sanitized whereas i think the spare book is really intended to sell copies and um so i obviously don't recommend watching or buying either of them but to just hear about what's in them from things like this because why would you want to buy one of these things um, so no, I think that they've made millions and millions of dollars, I think in the $135 million range, because they have a Spotify deal, they have a multi-year Netflix deal, obviously the book deal. Um, so they're really the ones who are making off with a lot of money from doing these accusations. And if they do any more projects, this is really the only topic they have to discuss. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, the... They, they need the salacious accusations in order to keep the book selling, for example. But like you say, if they really cut off ties with the royal family, if, if Prince Harry ceased to be Prince anything and was just 
Perry, then people would ask, well, what do you bring to the table? What do you know or what can you do? So this is a, I mean, what strikes me is this is such an anti-meritocratic enterprise. You've got two people who are complete duds. I mean, Meghan Markle tried to make it as an actress, complete failure. So they figured out that they have to navigate in the world and they're doing so in a very cunning and treacherous way uh, in which they convert the smallest of slights. I mean, let's say Prince William wrestled him to the ground. So what? I mean, imagine if I, if you or I were to take our childhoods and begin to start reciting every little thing. Uh, so they convert small episodes into large things. Um, really what they're claiming is special treatment from beginning to end, aren't they? Absolutely. And there are actually people who are biographers who like specialize in this subject. So Tom Bauer, who I've listened to, claims that the dog bowl story is actually made up because they do not have metal dog bowls, apparently, according to his research. And Harry was claiming that the metal went into his back. And so there's a lot of questionable, um, I guess, veracity to even some of the claims that they're making. They've actually repeatedly lied about some things. And so the facts don't actually line up with things they're saying. Like Megan will say, I've never heard of this with the royal family, that her family will provide evidence that she knew exactly what it was. Then in her Netflix documentary, she claims, oh, yeah, no, I looked at his Instagram page. And so I think it's just a constant web of lies that they get lost in telling. So in one second, it's like, no, we were just these kinds of victims. Then it was, no, we actually had a behind the scenes fight with them. Then it's, you know, so I think the story continues to change. And um, meanwhile, William and Kate, Charles, they haven't responded to any of these allegations. So we're only hearing one side of the story. And I think they feel like they can't respond because that pulls them into kind of this pit of mudslinging and fighting. And so how do you even respond? Do you go through each and every lie that Harry and Meghan have told? How do you even go down that road? So I think they're trying to take the, you know, never complain, never explain route. But I do think that they should not be invited to things with the royal family anymore because A, even if you take what Harry has said at face value, if you are a William and think he's going to attack you, why would you want to go to these things with him? Well, they want to go to it with him because it makes them relevant and they want to be famous. But I think the royal family should say this is for working royals. And so you are not part of that. You obviously have come out publicly with all of this information. And so they can enjoy their $135 million in Montecito living in a mansion if they want, but they don't also get to then be royals, I guess, or benefit from those photo ops and so on. So yeah, what you're saying that's is what I would personally do, but I don't know what Charles will decide. He seems like he's kind of a little bit more of a weak person. So apparently Queen Elizabeth, though, people have said she would have come out and clearly denounced Harry um, and Meghan. So she had a much lower tolerance for this. She was apparently the one who encouraged Charles um, and Diana to divorce because she was saying this can't really continue like this. It's not really good for the royal family. So I think she would have had a much more stern reaction. But Charles is maybe not that kind of person. Yeah, I mean, I agree. They've opted out. They should be booted. Um, this is a uh, wow, what a dysfunctional operation. And there it is for the world to see. Uh, Danielle, thanks very much for coming on to talk about it. Thank you. <laughs>